Hey, 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 welcome back to all my Cloud Scholars out there. And if you're first time to the page, I want to say a special welcome to you. My name is Kieran Tross. In today's video, what I want to talk to you about is we're going to focus on infrastructure as code, but the focus was going to be on Terraform. So the first, when we start off with this introduction to Azure Terraform for beginners, we need to define what Terraform is and then also what is infrastructure as code. So Terraform is an open source language that was developed by HashiCorp. And what it does, it helps you automate your infrastructure in the cloud on-prem as well. So let's go and take a look into what Terraform really is. So I'm not gonna PowerPoint you to death, just got a couple of slides here. Uh, so with Terraform, you can describe your infrastructure using code, which means you can version share, manage your infrastructure and in a more efficient and scalable way. So with Terraform, Terraform is a declarative language. So it uses declarative syntax. So what does that mean? Terraform uses a declarative syntax, meaning you define the desired state of your infrastructure and Terraform figures out how to get there. This makes it easy to you to understand and maintain your configuration. With Terraform, you have providers. Uh, providers are plugins that define and interact with your specific infrastructure platforms. You can use providers for AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and many more. So you probably clicked on this video because you are new to the concept of infrastructure as code. You're looking for a new opportunity. You're new to the cloud and you're seeing IAC all over in these job descriptions. And you're like, okay, what exactly is this? So what I want to do is not only talk to you about what Terraform is, but most importantly, the benefits of using Terraform. So please stay with me. So some of the benefits of using Terraform is automation, scalability, version control, reproductivity, reproducibility, cost savings, compliance and security, vendor agnostic, and continuous integration, continuous development. So let's start from the top when it comes to automation. So automation, your infrastructure automates the provisioning and management of infrastructure, reducing the manual effort required for deployment. Now, within using any cloud provider, it doesn't matter if it's AWS, GCP, Azure, there are tons of times where you can be putting out a new service. So let's say you're putting out a storage account or you're doing a SQL, uh, SQL server and you have three different architects doing the job. I guarantee three of them are probably going to do it in some different way, shape or form. So with this, the automation and the efficiency and the consistency helps out with your code. Scalability. So if you were to need to uh, set up, I don't know, 100 VMs, you can do that with Terraform using code. Now, if you are doing click ops, like within the Azure portal, you'll be there for a little while. Version control. So with version control, uh, you store version control systems. You have uh, different uh, version control systems. You have Git. You have you know, Azure DevOps. You have all your different um, resources that you can use for version control. This allows it to be uh, easily tracked. You can roll back and then you can also collaborate with team members. And we talked a little bit about reproducibility. Uh, 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 infrastructure code enables the recreation of entire environments in a consistent manner. This is valuable for development, testing, and disaster recovery scenarios. Documentation. Let's say you're getting audited for something. You can provide them your code and say, okay, look, we are doing things in the right fashion. Cost savings, this one's a huge one. Now, I talked earlier about the different virtual machines that you can use within your environment and you have all these different uh, architects. If your architects are deploying you know, D classes and F classes, and then some of them are doing B classes for uh, different uh, work streams, it, it really makes sense if you say, okay, this is the class that we're using and then we're not doing any other classes because you can now be overusing uh, or I should say, uh, get any higher class of virtual machines that you really don't need. And then Azure Advisor is going to tell you, hey, you don't need an F class for this. You could drop down to another series. Compliance and security. This is a big one. So we talked a little bit about the way you configure in your environment. You want to stay compliant. You also want to make sure you have security in mind. If you have people doing storage accounts and they're putting out information in the storage accounts and staff members are using that, and then the storage accounts is public, and they're not using private links, you want to make sure that you're doing it in the right fashion. So compliance and security is extremely important. Uh, speed and agility is another one. Uh, vendor agnostic as well. And then also want to make sure with the continuous integration, uh, deployment uh, integration, right? The CI CD. 
Let's just make it simple. Okay, so now that we know what Terraform is, we understand what infrastructure code is as well, let's talk a little bit about the Azure Terraform for Beginner series. So this is going to be a living series. So I'm gonna be updating this throughout all of 2024. I'm just gonna be coming to you with more and more videos. But what I'm gonna do, which is gonna be pretty cool, is I'm gonna have series within this series. So the main series is the Azure for Beginners uh, Terraform series. But then below that uh, is going to be a mini series. So if I need to, you know, teach you a specific concept, you know, I don't like making the videos, you know, 20, 40, you know, well, 30, 40, 50 minutes long. I try to break it down to give you the opportunity to take a break and then digest that information. So what I'm going to be doing is certain things like a virtual desktop. So when I start to get you to a point of uh, teaching you how to set up virtual desktops, I'll do certain fun technical scenarios. So what I'll be doing is doing things like, hey, you're a new cloud architect at Cloud Scholars, and I need you to set up a virtual desktop for the client, but I only want to make sure that only they can log in from a specific IP address. So things like that is what I'm going to be doing within this technical series. So the next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to install Terraform. I'm going to show you exactly how to set up the Terraform within your uh, Visual Studio code, and then also do the app registration for you as well, so that this way you have Terraform within your cloud environment and show you exactly how that gets done. So please hit that like and subscribe button so you can follow along with the Terraform series. If you have any questions or anything like that, please leave it in the comment section. Oh, and one last thing, in the video descriptions, what you'll be seeing is access to a link, which is gonna be for the Git, which has the uh, code so that you can follow along with each video. So that's gonna definitely be there within the links of the different videos. Some videos may not have a link because it's gonna be something really short and sweet, and you can just you know have it in your environment. You can follow along as I type. Other videos will have code already configured, and you need to download it, deploy it to your environment, and then follow along as we go through that specific technical scenario. So I know I said a lot just now. I want to wrap up this introduction. I want to also thank you if you are still here and watching this video. Once again, my name is Kieran Tross, and this is the Cloud Scholars page. My goal here is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you. See you next time.